Hello everyone, Andreas here, it's been a while. Exactly more or less four years since I started the 3D printing robot arm project. In this time I built um, five robot arms and what you here see is the latest iteration. It is, I built this last year um, and then I had a lot of uh, troubles with the electronics and paused the project until now. But anyways, I'm still working on it. As you can see, it changed a lot since the last uh, videos. And now I basically moved into my own workshop and have a lot, a lot of new tools and, and space to experiment with. This obviously took a long time to figure out how to do things. But right now, it's looking good that I can um, actually work on older projects and the robot arm is one of these. Um, the first robot that really worked was the version 4. Um, it was um, quite successful. Unfortunately last year at Maker Faire Berlin um, the motor at for axis 3 um, got too hot and melted the plastic so since this time it's loose and I didn't have the time or the mood to disassemble the whole system to, uh, to fix the motor and increase the belt tension. So number 4 is basically retired. So what's the difference to number 6? Uh, so, what's the difference to number 5, also called, called Mantis, oh, called Mantis? Well, Mantis has um, all the wires inside, it has slip rings on all the rotary joints uh, on the end of the arms, not on the bottom, that would be too expensive and too um, big because we have uh, almost 30 cables. Uh, going into the arm and it has um, the basically biggest NEMA 17 motors I could get and fit inside so it has, has a lot of torque and um, complete new electronics I used uh, moved from the Arduino Due which I used in the last one to uh, this one that's our STM32F407 microcontrollers, they run at 168 MHz. They have a floating point unit and this um, dev board is incredibly cheap, it's about 9 euros. I designed my own breakout shield to connect to the stepper drivers. It has also Ethernet and basically just connectors. Then we have a new encoder PCB, which I come later to, and new stepper motor driver. Right now I'm using the Trinamic TMC5160 uh, with a custom board I designed. Um, and this I will explain in a later video. But what I can say is that with the right stepper motor drivers these motors have incredible torque. In fact, the belt that holds the whole upper assembly got slipped in two, uh, two halves by the motor. As it run into itself, it just snapped the belt. It's incredible how strong they are. Um, there's only a small downside, and that is that the motor drivers are quite expensive, even if you build them by yourself. Um, so right now I have no kinematic model running. This is also a problem I will address in future parts. Because, um, the problem is right now that encoders are not working reliable. That is something I'm having trouble on this arm for about a year and that's also the reason I never finished it. 
But let's go move on to something you all are here. See the arm moving. It's powered by a 24 volt net, uh, power supply. Right now it runs over Ethernet and I have hooked up this MIDI control to my laptop and this um, connects to my universal sensor actor interface and I just can rotate every axis with one of these rotating knobs. So the gripper Let's go from top to bottom. The good thing of running it over Ethernet is you don't have to connect or reconnect, it just uh, gets us a data via UDP and if no arm is attached, the data vanishes in the network. So you can plug it on and off. The quite loud noise you heard on the later axis is basically the, whole, uh, the big huge cage for the uh, roller bearing in the bottom anyone has an idea how to get this uh, acquired, I would appreciate it. I'm right now out, out of ideas. So, why I have no kinematic model is basically the encoders stop losing uh, the signal and just uh, stop working after the motors are powered or even so if you do nothing at a certain amount of time. And since the arm has not a single end limit switch at every axis, I cannot do a calibration run. The whole idea of this arm was that the encoder with the absolute position tell the computer at which state the arm is and then you can calculate your kinematic model and everything. But without uh, the proper encoder running, I get something like the crash which snapped the belt. And until I fix the encoder, I cannot uh, get the arm working. On the plus side, with the new controllers, which have much more um, calculating power, all the kinematic model will run easily on the robot itself. Also, the stepper motor drivers have integrated um, acceleration and deceleration curves. They are actually controlled via SPI fully digital. So this takes a lot of load uh, from the main processor to, uh, and uses the stepper motor drivers to control the acceleration and deceleration. So we have plenty of room for the kinematic and even future expansions. So how strong it is, that's actually hard to tell, but we can uh, somehow test it. So this is a NEMA 17 motor, um, it weighs about 650 grams. Let's see if we can grab it.
you can see, the robot. <laughs> As you can see, it's um, not a heavy task for the robot to grab 700, uh, 650 grams. So I think at the moment the weakest point is the gripper. But you also see here we have, have a lot of basically flex in the system. It's from the belts and many from the belts and from the, uh, the ways how the belt are, belts are tightened. So this is something, a uh, future version, which I may building will be improving. So, one way to fix the encoders is uh, to use a different kind of encoder and I designed a new PCB, but I'm still waiting for the parts. So at this version we have 12-bit encoders and these are the 14-bits. Well, so if you're watching this right now, I appreciate if you stick to this project for this long time. Or if you found it just recently, there will be future updates. I hope to see you soon and bye-bye.